All right, appraisers, this is Brandon with Spark for Appraisers. And in this video, we're gonna be covering depreciated cost and essentially depreciated cost as it relates to residential real estate appraisers in helping to determine an adjustment for a particular feature. In this case, we're probably gonna cover G above grade GLA adjustment and we'll probably do like a garage adjustment, maybe a bathroom adjustment. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. First, I wanna talk briefly to the cost data haters. Cost data can be very valuable as an appraiser. I would just encourage you, if you aren't super familiar with it, to give it a shot. I think it can be very valuable. I know some people say, well, cost doesn't equal value, so that's stupid, I don't wanna use it, it gives me wacky results. And while that's true, cost does not equal value or market value, but it does equal market value when you account for depreciation. Just to say that in a different way, cost to build a certain improvement minus the depreciation of that improvement does equal market value by definition. Just to show you here, I'm gonna put it on the screen. I pulled up the definition of depreciation from the Dictionary of Real Estate Appraisal, sixth edition, and it says, depreciation is in appraisal, a loss in property value from any cause. Then it says depreciation is the difference between the cost of an improvement on the effective date of the appraisal and the market value of the improvement on the same date. So again, the cost to build an improvement on a particular day minus the depreciation on that particular day equals the market value on that date. So cost can be translated to market value by applying depreciation. So I would encourage you, if, if you can reliably come up with an estimate of depreciation and you feel like you have a reliable result for the cost to build an improvement, then you should get a reliable estimate of the market value of that improvement or the difference between the improvements from one property to another, which is what we're kind of talking about today. So even though you may not like using cost data, it is a good way to help you in multiple methods, both with the cost approach and in determining value and also potentially using that data to come up with adjustments that you can use in the sales comparison approach. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. Actually, you know what? No, I wanna say one more thing. I'm not by any means saying place a whole bunch more weight on cost data than anything else. I'm not saying that. I like looking at a whole bunch of different methods and reconciling that data and coming up with the adjustment or the opinion of value. But what I, what I do want to say is that the cost approach, you, you can kind of relate it to the sales comparison approach in the sense that, you know, people will say, well, you know, I, I don't know exactly how much the depreciation is. So I'm going to, my estimate's not going to be super accurate, but I, I would argue the same thing with the sales comparison approach, right? You don't know, you don't have perfect knowledge of the comparables, but you still estimate that data, you put together a grid, you say, here's what I think the quality, the condition, all these other features are, and then you apply adjustments sometimes to those that you also have to estimate. So there are compromises in every approach to value. You don't have perfect knowledge in any of those approaches. If you're gonna hate on cost data, I, I feel like you also have to hate on the sales comparison approach because they, they have their trade-offs. Anyways, that's my spiel on that. I realize you may disagree, but I just felt like throwing that out there. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on to, what are we talking about? Oh yeah, depreciated costs, and let's just do some math here. All right, so I'm gonna pull up a calculator. And by the way, I'm gonna be using Spark to do this. This is what you're, the screen you're looking at here that says property one, two, and three, and I head them with subject property on in the middle. The left, I called it step down, and the right, I called it step up. This is essentially the screen in Spark that has to do with site extraction. As I said, we're not gonna be using the site extraction. It's just the tool I'm gonna be using. You absolutely do not need to use Spark or our adjustment tool to do this. Do it on a piece of paper, do it with a calculator, do it with a spreadsheet. However you wanna do it, the math is not complicated. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. And also this video is not to talk about how we estimate depreciation. This is assuming you have figured out what your depreciation is, your effective age, or however you're calculating physical depreciation, whether using the age life method or some variation of that. Um, but anyways, this video is not about estimating depreciation, it is about calculating Pot potential adjustments using the depreciated cost method. All right, so let's now let's get into the math. Sorry for so many digressions there. Okay, the subject property, the depreciated cost, so that's the cost to build this property new minus the depreciation, which I'm currently estimating at 30%, is 157,892. And this property on the left is identical 
to the subject property, except that it has 200 square feet less of above grade GLA. So I am going to take the 157892, which is the depreciated cost of the subject, subtract that from the depreciated cost of this step down, which is the, again, the identical property, except that it has, it's a little bit smaller. And, and I just used 200 square feet. That's about, that's 10%. And I also went 10% up over here on the right. You don't have to use that. You may prefer to use 100 square feet, 50 square feet, a percentage, whatever it is, it's fine. And also in our adjustment tool, we also allow you to fully customize how you, I, I call it step. I'm using quote air quotes here, but how you step up or step down. Okay, so I subtract those and that gives me $15,222. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing with my step up, which is the property that's 200 square feet larger, 2,200 square feet rather than 2,000. So then I do the 172973, subtract the depreciated cost of the subject, and you can see our numbers are almost identical, off by about $141, it looks like. So. So very similar numbers, whether we're looking at the step up or step down. And that kind of makes sense if you consider principle of diminishing returns. You know, when you have more square feet, it's going to cost a little bit less to build those square feet. So it makes sense that going to the larger property had a slightly smaller result than the, slightly, than the property that was a little bit smaller. Okay, so we've got that. And now what we can say is, well, the, this is the difference between these two properties in depreciated cost based on their only difference, which in this case is 200 square foot of GLA. So now I can divide by those 200 square feet. Did I just, what did I do? Sorry, I'm gonna go 15081 divided by 200. Sorry about that. So again, just to clarify in case I screwed you up, it's depreciated cost minus this depreciated cost. That gave us the 15081 and then I divide by the difference in GLA and that gives us $75 a square foot. And let's just do the same thing with the step down. If you remember, that gave us the 15222. So I'm gonna go uh, 15222 divided by 200, and that gives us $76.11. So we're talking a 71-ish uh, cent difference between the two. And then what that also allows us to do is I can take the step up and subtract the step down. So let's just see what happens with that. So I can go 172973 minus 142670. That's this number minus this number. And then divide by their difference in GLA because otherwise they are identical. And that gives us 400 square feet. So divide by 400. And now we got $75.76. So we've got 75, 76, and 76 if we round to the nearest dollar. Very, very similar results. A grand total difference between all of those results of less than a dollar. So pretty good. So we have that. And then essentially you could say, okay, we're done. Based on depreciated costs, we have about a $75 adjustment per square foot. There are a couple things to keep in mind here. First is depreciation. So we did account for depreciation. However, the feature that you're analyzing may depreciate at a different rate than the rest of the dwelling, the overall depreciation you're applying, or it may have other types of depreciation. So you want to make sure and account for that. And so um, you can apply a percent remaining economic life adjustment to that. So you can say the percent remaining economic life difference could be 75% of the full 100%. And so while the math is a little bit more complicated, what it, what it results in is whatever that percentage is, you multiply that by this. So you can say, you know what, it's actually at 80% when it comes to GLA. So I can multiply that by 0.8 and that gives me about a 60 or $61 adjustment. The other thing that might apply is let's say you're getting the cost to build a swimming pool which dwelling cost allows you to do. Typically buyers don't pay full cost for a swimming pool minus regular physical depreciation. You got to apply an extra bit of depreciation. So the cost to build a swimming pool might be 50 grand. You, let's say you apply our, what we have down here is our 30%. That would leave you with $35,000. Now, if the market value of that pool is actually $10,000, then that's an extra $25,000 you would make sure that you need to apply as some additional obsolescence or additional depreciation. Our adjustment tool allows you to do that. So if you're calculating this by hand or in a spreadsheet, 
make sure that on features that you think depreciate at a different rate or have some additional depreciation that you account for that. Here, I can just say minus my additional depreciation, which is uh, 25,000 or whatever it happens to be. And that might be your actual adjustment. So anyways, just be careful of that. And then the one other thing, and this applies to GLA, which is what we were measuring now. And keep in mind, our adjustments for GLA were 75, 76, and 76. So in GLA, we use dwelling cost in within our adjustment tool and in Spark to get our cost data, our cost to build whatever improvement. And in, in that cost data provider, they include certain things in the GLA. I mean, obviously it includes pretty much everything you'd use to build a dwelling. So what that includes, which is a large cost that we may need to account for is the cost to build the kitchen. If I'm trying to estimate the identical property to the subject, but it's just a hundred square feet bigger or 200 square feet bigger, then I probably wanna normalize the kitchen. I, I want to keep that constant. So when I'm saying I'm adding on a couple hundred square feet to a property, I, I don't wanna account for having a different kitchen, like having a larger kitchen. Because essentially, if I just add 200 square feet to this and load it into dwelling cost, this cost difference right here to build the actual dwelling, 247 versus 225, 560, that includes some amount in that price per square foot that's that's accounting for the kitchen. And as the house gets bigger, it's, it's including an additional cost for the kitchen. So what you might wanna do is just right off the bat, subtract out the kitchen. Here's how you could do that. Dwelling cost, they provide us with an estimate of how much of that cost to build is due to the kitchen. And it varies by quality and all that. And let's just say for the ease of calculation that it's 10%. So just to show you how you would do this, you would take your total cost to build new for that dwelling, which is 225, 560. Actually, that's right here. And let's pull back up the calculator. So we go 225, 560 subtract out that 10%, or you can also multiply by 90%. That gives us 203,004. And then you apply the depreciation, which we're estimating at 30%. Whoops, so I'm gonna multiply by 70% to get the actual cost we want. Keep in mind, the 70% is the depreciated cost, the 30% is just the depreciation. So we got 142,103. So now we do the step up, and so that property is 240. 47,104, we get rid of the kitchen, which is again, 10%, so we're multiplying it by 90%. That gets us the 222,393, and then we apply our depreciation. And so getting rid of that 30%, we can just multiply by 70%. And now we got 155,675. We can subtract the result we got by subtracting out the kitchen and applying depreciation for our subject, which was this number right here, 142,102.8. And that gives us 13,572. And now basically what we can do is divide that by the 200 square foot difference. And now we have essentially a $68 adjustment for GLA versus before we had a 75 or $76 adjustment per square foot for GLA. So it did go down a bit and that's essentially removing any influence by the kitchen. So we're not accounting for having a bigger kitchen or anything like that. And that gets us to $68 a square foot would be the difference. And then we can do the same thing for property one. And as I showed before, you can also do the same thing for one versus three. What our adjustment tool will do is it'll look at the step down, the step up, comparing those to the subject. And it also compares those to each other. And then it just averages the numbers. In our case before where we had 75, 76, and 76, it would just add those three numbers up, divide by three. And I'm sure you get 76 bucks. It really is such a minute difference that it's not really necessary to do step up and step down and then compare the other two against each other and then take the average of them all. But we do it just, you know, to give an average of all the possibilities, but you don't, you don't have to do that. You could just do a step up if you want. And it really does depend also on the feature that you're analyzing. For example, quality. Um, of, if you're getting the quality of a Q2 and a Q3 and a Q4, you aren't gonna wanna most likely average those. You're just gonna wanna know the cost difference between each of those steps rather than averaging the difference between all of them. And we'll get into that in a, in a minute, but for now, let's just go ahead and get into garage. That's the next one. And then we'll probably get into quality last year and we'll, we'll wrap up the video. Okay, so for garage, let's see how we do that. I'm gonna move this 
calculator out of the way and add a garage here. So let's say the step down has no garage. We'll say that the subject has a garage that's a, uh, let's change that to, we'll just estimate a one car garage there. And we'll say this one has the equivalent of a two car garage. Now we need to make sure and go and change the GLA. So these are all identical. So now we have identical properties with the exception of the garage. So let's go ahead and pull up the calculator, get that ready here. All right, so what we have here is the subject is a one car garage and property one has no garage. So we got 164, 170 minus 157, 892. And that gives us a potential adjustment for a one car garage versus no garage of about $6,000. Now let's try the other step, which is a two car garage going down to a one car. So we'll take 170, 010. Whoops. There we go and subtract the subject, which is the depreciated cost of 164, 170. So again, that's this number here, the depreciated cost for the two car garage minus the depreciated cost for the subject, which is a one car garage. And that gives us 5,800 or right around 6,000 again. So that's our difference. And then we can take the average of those or depending on the situation, you mean there may be slightly different depreciation applied if there's a big difference in your market going from no car garage to one car versus one car to two car. But anyways, that's that's kind of how it works. And easy enough, we really quickly got a potential garage adjustment. Hopefully that helps everybody understand how depreciated cost works. You can do use it for a lot of different things. Obviously, bathrooms, difference in stories if it's warranted, basement calculations, you, even quality, which is kind of cool. For some appraisers, it's kind of hard to come up with an, a, a quality adjustment that's defensible. But with cost data, it's really not that difficult to do, assuming you have good cost data and good estimates of depreciation. Your cost data provider may have different quality ratings than you know UAD. So you just got to be careful that you estimate those properly. But let's just say, for the sake of argument, that a Q4 property in dwelling cost is what they would consider a 3.0. And let's say that a Q3 property in dwelling cost is what they would consider, let's just say 4.0 for now. So this is a Q4, this is a Q3. In dwelling cost, the higher the number, the higher the quality, but obviously in UAD, the lower the number, the higher the quality. So let's just do that. And let's get rid of any garage differences so we don't have to worry about that. So now we've got two identical properties, only difference is quality. Get, and here, let's just remove this one for the sake of looking at data more simply. Move the calculator over here. Okay, so here are the numbers. We've got 157,892 is the depreciated cost for the subject property. And then the step down in quality, which we're saying is a Q4, but in dwelling cost, it's a 3.0. It, the, it is 133,602. And so now you could say that your quality adjustment is around $24,000 and you have defense for that. Obviously, you want to make sure that you agree that this is that this is a reasonable adjustment for what's going on. And keep in mind, you may have two properties that are both Q3, but one is still lower quality. And that's OK. We, you know, you can still account for that. So you could say then that's a 3.5 maybe. In our adjustment tool, we do have a menu where you can go and customize what each Q rating, including half steps of Q ratings, would equal in dwelling cost. Dwelling cost provided us with some estimates. We use those by default in our tool, but you can go customize those. And obviously, if you're calculating this yourself, then you don't have to worry about that. You just figured out what it is yourself. Um, okay, so let's go back to the calculator. And now we can say our depreciated cost difference is 157,892 minus 146,286. And we've got about a $12,000 adjustment. And so you could say, okay, this is kind of a, this is a Q4, but this is a Q4 plus maybe. And so the difference between those two Q4 properties is still, let's just say a 10 or $12,000 adjustment that you'd want to make. Again, anytime you have multiple methods that you can use, I would definitely encourage you to look at multiple methods. It's always good to not just rely on one method, but I believe this would be a good starting point, assuming you have good cost data and a good estimate of depreciation. All right, now I'm really done talking. Thank you for watching. I'm pretty sure that in the next video, we're going to cover sensitivity. Thanks a lot.